Chapter 11 is a history lesson fit for the big screen. Just like any good story, we have a protagonist and an antagonist, and the battle gives the protagonist two main types of conflict, man versus man and man versus self. The man versus man conflict is between two kings, one, the newly appointed king of Israel, the other, an adversary taking advantage of a somewhat divided nation. The man versus self conflict is between the new king and his own sin nature. Our antagonist, Nahash the Ammonite, shows Satan-like characteristics in his approach to this conflict. In verse 2, we see he was a ruthless leader with the goal of not only glorifying himself, but also humiliating the men of Israel. If we were to do a comparison of these two enemies, Nahash and Satan, here's what we'd find. Nahash actually means serpent. Satan is the original serpent. Both seek to enslave God's people. They use intimidation to put pressure on their victims. Both seek to humiliate in order to exalt themselves. Like Nahash, Satan wants to blind us in order to render us useless in battle. Their ultimate goal, to bring reproach on God's people. Our protagonist is Saul, the first king of Israel. Our man versus man conflict begins after Saul hears the Ammonite king is invading the city of Jabesh Gilead. Saul must decide how to confront this enemy. Saul's victory starts where we find him in verse 5, coming behind the herd from the field. Why is this important? It shows Saul's humility. In the last chapter, we read of Saul being anointed as king, but there had never been a king in Israel before. So Saul went back to the field and waited for God to tell him when the time was right to begin. When it was time for Saul to act, verse 6 says, The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Saul didn't seek the Spirit for selfish reasons. And just like us, we should seek the Spirit in the same way Saul did, in order to be empowered and used by him. Saul, through the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, creates a battle plan and eventually defeats Nahash. This is where the man versus self battle really begins. In the last few verses of the chapter, Saul is faced with some seriously tough decisions. He is faced with the decision of taking revenge on his naysayers, and he wisely refuses. He's faced with taking credit for the victory uh, over Nahash and letting pride creep in. But Saul gives the credit to the Lord. His words are, the Lord has accomplished this victory in Israel. These two conflicts come to an end with the people of Israel worshiping the Lord for defeating their enemy and giving them a king. The end of verse 14 reads, Saul and all the men of Israel rejoiced. So like Saul and the men of Israel, we too should be rejoicing in the victory of our king, the Lord Jesus Christ, who not only defeated death, but now sits at the right hand of the Father.